On a hot August day, a man phoned a friend to pick up his child from school because he was unable to. He told his friend to bring the child home. Little did his friend know, he and the child would arrive to the house while a vicious murder was taking place. Even worse, that it was the child's father that had planned for them to see it. In a community still haunted by an attack that left a mother and her four young children brutally murdered, another attack on a defenseless family would take place. The Sunset Park neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York is home to a large Chinese community. It's widely known as the Chinatown of Brooklyn. This neighborhood is not known as one of Brooklyn's high crime neighborhoods, however, it is the scene of some of the most horrific and unimaginable crimes. The latest occurring on August 23, 2023. Jin Honglu and his wife Zhao Zhao were just like most others in their community, young immigrants from China coming to the United States in search of a better life. By 2023, they had been living in the United States for six years, where they had welcomed their two children, five-year-old David and three-year-old Sophia. They were beginning to have the life they'd always hoped for, and they were working hard and sacrificing for it. Jin did the same as many Chinese immigrants and went out of state to work in a restaurant. This gave him the opportunity to earn more money and he returned to New York to see his wife and kids about every three weeks. Because of such high cost of living, it's typical for multiple families to share a living space. Usually this uncomfortable, cramped living arrangement can actually have some positives. Oftentimes, families sharing meals together and children having close playmates. Sadly, this is not the experience of Zhao and her children. They moved into their second floor apartment at 531 52nd Street in 2020. Zhao was a stay-at-home mom to the kids. The three of them shared one bedroom while another room was occupied by a 47-year-old man and his nine-year-old son, and the third room was occupied by another couple. As you can imagine, it was tight living. This was just one of the sacrifices they made until they could get settled and stable in their new homeland. However, it would have haunting consequences. Being that Zhao was a stay-at-home mom to the two young children, she often only left the apartment to walk to nearby supermarkets or playgrounds with David and Sophia. The kids were well known on the block for playing with others on the sidewalk. Neighbors thought they were a sweet family. Nobody could have imagined what they were going through behind closed doors. Nobody except those living in adjacent apartments. According to neighbors inside the apartment building, it was not uncommon to hear yelling and screaming coming from the second floor apartment. It was no secret that Zhao and one of the other tenants, 47-year-old Li Yongyi, did not get along. Yongyi shared a room with his nine-year-old son in the apartment, but often blamed Zhao for the tight living conditions and all of the clutter in the home. He was often heard yelling at her about the children making too much noise. Neighbors could hear his outbursts over the usage of Wi-Fi and the kitchen they shared. For the three years all of them lived together, there were constant arguments. Despite multiple neighbors in the building saying the entire building could hear the fights, nobody ever voiced concerns of what they heard until it was too late. Yang Yi's burst of anger frightened Zhao, but she was unable to please him. After all, they had to share the kitchen space, she had to cook for her children, and her husband had to work out of state to provide for the family, and they could not move because they simply could not afford it. It's unknown why Yang Yi continued to live in the apartment if he hated his housemates so much. But a boiling point was soon to come. On Monday, August 21st, 2023, there was an argument unlike any other coming from the second floor apartment. Yang Yi could be heard throughout the building yelling about clutter in the bathroom that they shared. He was furious about the children's bathroom belongings taking up space. Neighbors recounted hearing Zhao screaming about her children. Despite the magnitude of this fight, police were never called. The tenant in the third room never intervened. That Monday evening fight was the last time neighbors in the building heard anything coming from their apartment. The next day was oddly quiet. What felt like sudden peace would soon turn to unimaginable horror. Just two days later, on Wednesday, August 23rd, Yang Yi reportedly called a friend saying he planned to fight Zhao. It's unclear what he meant by fight, but what unfolded hours later at the apartment was no fight. It was a brutal massacre of the family. What's also unclear is why the friend Yi phoned did not alert authorities to his concerning plans or offer to intervene, mediate, or talk him out of it. 
That morning, after Yi took his son to school and the other tenants left for the day, Zhao took her children to the supermarket before returning home later in the morning. She was going about her normal routine that day, preparing food and playing with the children. Just a few blocks away, Yang Yi made a chilling phone call. He called one of the tenants that occupied the third room and asked them to pick up his son from school because he was unable to. Yang Yi returned to the apartment early in the afternoon, and without any buildup or warning, he carried out his sickening plan. While Zhao was on the floor with David and Sophia, Yang Yi suddenly attacked her with a hammer. He viciously bludgeoned her so severely that when authorities got to the scene, they thought she had been stabbed because of the overwhelming amount of blood covering the walls and flooding the room. But Yang Yi didn't just want to murder Zhao. He planned to bludgeon five-year-old David and three-year-old Sophia as well. After striking them with the hammer countless times, he called a friend and told them he'd done something wrong. Moments later, when his other housemate arrived home with Yang Yi's nine-year-old son, they walked inside to find Yi standing over Zhao and the kids, still holding the hammer and drenched in blood. The housemate took his son and ran out of the blood-soaked apartment and called 911. When authorities arrived to the scene, they could smell the blood before they even entered the apartment. Yang Yi was arrested outside of the building as he attempted to flee. Officers in the apartment acted quickly, knowing they couldn't wait for EMTs to come to the apartment. It would take simply too long. They carried the children covered in blood down the stairs, skipping the elevator because they didn't want to wait a second, because they truly felt the kids could die in their arms. They carried them to a nearby ambulance and quickly sped off to a nearby hospital just blocks away. Zhao was brought to the hospital as well, but she was quickly declared dead. Authorities had a difficult time establishing just how many times she'd been struck because her body was so badly beaten. But it was declared she died from massive blunt force trauma. Jin was nearly a thousand miles away working in Ohio when he got the news. He arrived back to New York where David and Sophia were transferred to Bellevue Hospital Trauma Center, where doctors told him they did not expect the kids to survive. Yong Yi remained cold and emotionless throughout his arrest and during his arraignment. He was arraigned in Brooklyn Supreme Court on charges of second-degree murder, attempted second-degree murder, first-degree assault, and fourth-degree criminal possession of a weapon. His horrific crimes left members of the community shocked and horrified by what they had witnessed firsthand. Police officers, one carrying a bloodied baby, and right the other one carrying another bloodied baby, full, covered with blood. Days after the attack, the chief of police issued a press conference to ease the fears in the community. Jin was invited to be there, but was unable to make it because doctors recommended he stay by his kid's side. David was stable, but Sophia was still unable to breathe on her own and not expected to make it. Despite questioning, Yang Yi has yet to provide his motive for the attacks. At the time of his arrest, he had no history of mental illness and had never been in trouble with the police. Detectives remain firm that this was a planned and calculated attack. If convicted, he faces 25 years to life. At the time of this recording, David and Sophia are still in rehabilitation after their miraculous fight. David suffered amnesia and couldn't recognize his father after the attack, but after countless surgeries and months in the hospital, he is now able to communicate with family. Sophia underwent multiple brain surgeries and after four months in New York City's best children's hospital, she was recently released to follow a long-term rehabilitation plan. Jin never spoke publicly about the attack, only saying he prays his kids get through this. He remains in New York with David and Sophia, surrounded by family that has flown in from China to assist in any way. Another unimaginable case of displaced rage from this neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. Another woman killed at the hands of a lunatic she lived with. Similar to the other Brooklyn case I covered in this community, the strength of the victim's families blows me away. Rest in peace to Zhao, and I do hope justice will be served and he'll be put away for the rest of his life. If you're interested in watching the other video where I covered a case eerily similar to this one in the same neighborhood, you can watch that here. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.